compensate that to the wind speed. So you're relying to some extent on local knowledge in the area where the strong winds come from. <coughs> okay? The Weibull curve <coughs> is a curve of the distribution of the wind speed, how often you get wind at different speeds. So this curve shows that the most common wind, wind direction is actually, the motor one is about 5.5 meters per second. The median, which is half the time, half the time the wind is, in, is, is below 6.6 .6, and the rest of the time it's above 6.6. .6. And the average of the wind speed measurements that you will get in total is 7, mean wind speed. And that's the one that we actually use, okay? So that's the one that we, we, we use in the calculator. It just comes in automatically into the calculator. So if you want to do a desk-based system, there are three websites that you, you visit. You look at the ESB map, first of all, to get some idea of the wind speed in your local area. You can then enter that. So you then key in the figure for the roughness class and the height that you're going to put your turbine into a calculator. And that tells you what the mean wind speed will be at the hub height. So I quite often hear people saying, oh, I look at the wind map and I've got an 8 meter per second wind speed on my site. And they, they apply that. No, that's at 75 meters off the ground. By the time you compensate that with your roughness class, you might be coming down to 6 or 6.5 meters per second wind speed. And that's the figure that you need to apply. You then key in that mean wind speed and the power curve for the turbine that you're using. And the, the calculator looks at the Weibull curve, it looks at the power curve of the turbine and the mean wind speed, and it estimates your annual output for the turbine. So that's the process that we, we go through, okay? So you get a, a power curve from your, your turbine. At the moment, in relation to our own turbine, we're still using theoretical power curves. We, we have done trials and we're getting close to it. You get a figure like this where it tells you what the theoretical output is. Um, and the one that you want, by the way, it's quite important that you get this, is what the output is at the other end of the inverter. Some people will tell you what's coming out of the generator. You don't need to know what's coming out of the generator. That's not what you're actually getting. What you're getting is when that power has gone through the rectifiers, through the controller, through the cable from the turbine to the house, through the inverter, what are you getting out of the inverter into your meter? That's the figure you want. So you get usually from a, a, a company, you get a curve like this. And actually, you can see, you know, for example, sure enough, at 5 meters per second, we're producing about, say, 210 watts or 220 watts. Double wind speed, it should go up eightfold. It should be in around 1,600 watts. Yeah, sure enough. That's the kind of multiples that you're looking at. It's a fairly steep curve. <coughs> Fortunately, there's no standardization around the wind speed at which people describe a turbine. So when somebody says this is a 5 kilowatt turbine, you need to know well, what, at what wind speed is it producing 5 kilowatts, and is that what the generator is producing, or is that what you're getting out of the inverter? And <clears throat> I would ask for the raw data to back that up. So this is the, uh, the wind map site. What you do is <clears throat> you go into your um, location on this map, you pick your location, you click on the info button here at the top, you click back on your location, you try and find exactly where you are, and up will come a sidebar here that tells you the wind speeds at different heights for that site. Okay? So when we click on this point in the map, we get up that at 50 meters high, you're getting between seven and three quarters and eight meters per second. Okay? Now at 100 meters, we're getting between eight and three quarters and nine. But we, we take the lowest of those figures. Okay? Then we go into the calculator on the windpower.org site. By the way, sorry, you can also use, in Ireland, you can use Ordnance Survey. They do caution that their map, their map is actually more accurate and includes all sorts of little lanes like this is our house just here, you know, which is wonderful. It gives you the exact location much more accurately than the ESB map. But with the Ordnance Survey, if you want the data for your area, you have to buy the map, okay? So if you're doing this, it's probably worth buying your local map. And this is a much more accurate map, and you get your colour here, and you get your, your wind speed off that. So then you apply the mean wind speed at 75 metres we had, sorry, uh, at uh, 50 metres there we had a wind speed. We take the lower figure of 7.75, right? You would then enter your 7.75 into your roughness glass. 
So if you had um, a wind speed of 7.75, <laughs> what we say, at 50 metres, you would enter that in the column for your roughness class. So if your rough roughness class was 2, you would enter it into the box for the 50 metres at 2 metres per se at, 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 um, at roughness class 2 at 50 metres high. Click on the calculate button and it would tell you what your wind speed was at the height of your hull. Now that's assuming it's still only giving you 10 metres and 20 metres. If you click on the plot button here, you then get a shear graph like this, which you can print out on graph paper to get an exact representation. If you had a, a we say a 12 metre tower, to get an exact representation of what the output would be at your tower height. Okay. Having established that you've got a, a mean wind speed of, we say, 6.5 metres per second, or 7 metres per second, you put that into this calculator. You, your weight bull shape parameter is 2. It won't let you, this calculator is designed for wind farms, but the, the calculation works okay. It won't let you put the thing at less than 50 metres high because it's not designed for that. And then you have to put in manually your turbine information and the information from your power curve for your turbine, okay, <laughs> into the boxes at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, web page. And again, you hit the calculate button, and it'll tell you in kilowatt hours what the output of your turbine is. So you then have to take in a few other influences into height, uh, uh, sorry, into account. Um, one is if the turbine is located in a hollow. And that's something that happens here, actually, because on the face of it, we seem to have a very good site. We <coughs> look down our field at um, the sea, and we think, right, there's nothing between us and America, and we, we put the turbine in. But what we actually have here is <coughs> we're, on the, we're looking down here at the sea, and we put our turbine here, and that looks fantastic, until you realize when you go for a walk up the hill that the hill does that behind us. And we're actually down in a hollow, a long way off from um, where the wind really is blowing. So for us, we need to get up to here to get back into that wind again. You've got cable losses. We'll come on to that in a little while. But you might, if your turbine is a long way from your house, particularly if you're running a battery system at low voltage, you will lose, perhaps in our case, with our low voltage proven turbine, we're losing 10% of our power in the cable. I'll come on to that in a bit. You have inverter losses. <coughs> Again, they should have been factored into the power curve, but if they haven't been, if it turns out that the figure that they're giving for the power curve is coming off the generator, you need to, to factor that one in. And then if you're putting in a battery system, you'll have two sources of losses. One is that quite often you, during extreme wind conditions, you won't be able to store all the energy that's coming off the wind. So halfway through the night, your wind turbine will have been diverted to heat dumps or to other sort of ways of getting rid of the surplus power. And the round trip efficiency of battery systems is, uh, is around about 80%. So you're losing 20% of your power in your batteries and also your inverter will be less efficient. And lastly, <coughs> in areas with extreme wind conditions, the turbine cut out speed, the turbine will cut out a wind above perhaps 15, 16, 18 meters per second. And the turbine will be shut down during those times. Again, if you've taken the power curve from the turbine, taken that shut, shut out into account, that will have come in in your calculations. Okay, so those are the, having done all that, if you arrive at a situation where your output is below 400 kilowatt hours per square meter of swept area, well, to be honest, you can do the finances and work out yourself whether the turbine is a viable proposition for you or not at that point. But they, they, the rule of thumb is that if it's working at less than 400 kilowatt hours per square meter in the UK and the city of training, they suggest you should either look for another site for your turbine, a higher tower, or look for a turbine with a different power curve. <laughs> okay?